It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Cincinnati Bengals. And it's all just ahead on Madden NFL 24. On a picture-perfect Midwestern afternoon for football, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, a lot of people see these Bengals as legitimate contenders to get to the Super Bowl. And remember, they got there just two years ago. What do they need to do to get back? Well, we know how well positioned they are on offense, partner, because they have one of the best quarterbacks in the game and a lot of firepower to go with it. But how about what they did in the draft this year? A lot of capital expended on the defensive side of the ball, trying to slow down some of the other top contenders. Meanwhile, for the visiting Seahawks, most of the pundits, yourself included, Charles, gave their draft class high marks. And that comes after a year where they struck gold in the fifth round with Tariq Woolen. And they also struck gold in the offensive line, getting brand new tackles at left and right. Struck gold with a running back who was a big time runner as a rookie. Yeah, there's something to be said about building through the draft. set to go Evan McPherson to do the honors and we are underway from Cincinnati this taken in right around the goal line and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20 so out come the Seahawks now for their first possession and they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia it's Geno Smith I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia he was coming off of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. They run with the second-year man. It's Kenneth Walker. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Now Smith. Over the middle, finding Smith and Jigba. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Play action, it's Smith. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Walker now on first and 10. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and six. Smith. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Throwing on third down, Smith. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 23. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. 
And on this first drive, looks like they want to get that vertical passing game going early. And they did, and what a warning shot they just fired. If you're not going to back up and play coverage deep, we're going to attack you all game long. And once you adjust to that and you start to back off, then that opens things up underneath. A really nice start for them. Great way to get the game going. Now Gino on first down. This will be caught inside the 10. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. Here's Walker. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Here's where we need to see some tenacity from this defense because they've been pushed right down the field on this opening drive. They've got to find some way to push back, and that's a good first step. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Again, Walker. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, and now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four-down territory? Might he go for it? Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Boy, such a good drive. You'd hate to have it end in three. Do you think about going for it? Absolutely. I mean, the fact that they've moved the ball so well should lead you to the decision that maybe we should go for it right here. Also, as a head coach, show some confidence in your team. Let them know you think they can go get it. They'll run for it. It's Walker. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Kenneth Walker taking it in from two yards out. And the Seahawks' decision to go for it pays off with six points. So that, an early statement. They go for it on fourth and goal and wind up punching it in. And that wasn't on the one-yard line either. It wasn't just quarterback sneak range. They had to work for that one, but they certainly got the job done. Extra point up and through by Myers. And it's now a 7-0 game. the touchdown here's Myers to boot it away and he'll take it a yard or so past the 20 call it the 21 here come the Bengals and CD of course it's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback and when you come into the league as the number one guy selected a lot of hype comes with it sometimes that weight can be unbearable but this young man he took that weight on and handled it as well as you can imagine. And I love his ability to make a second, third reaction play and create downfield. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Boyd. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Burrow looking to pass. That's caught by the tight end, Irv Smith Jr. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. 
And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. On second down, Burrow. A quick throw there he is incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. And Burrow going to be hit and taken down. They got him. Draymond Jones coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. The start of this game shaping up nicely on that visiting sideline. Yeah, how about that? You get your points on the opening drive. Then you get a big sack there on third down. And you make the home crowd go. There is a hush indeed. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. The back deep is DJ Dallas. Fielded at about the 28. It's a 43-yard punt, a return of five. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Walker to start the drive. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They'll fake it. Now Smith. He completes this to Walker. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. From the 50, it's Smith. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Partner, I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up in man coverage. But on that play, they held up quite well. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Smith now to throw. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Up the middle they run, it's Walker. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. Back to throw, Smith. Throwing the out route and he connects with Fan. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 22-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Run. 
Running left is Walker. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 48 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to sit, as you've said. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Nick Ballore, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks lead this now 13-0 here in the opening quarter of the ball game. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two, two touchdowns. Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here, in a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. clean football game right now this deficit there's a fumble good news for them at least that went out of bounds you're exactly right and as they breathe a sigh of relief you know they're looking at the scoreboard thinking to themselves if we turn it over there things could really get rough for us trying to make a comeback in this game burrow gonna fake to mix it and now look to throw another one into the hands of jamar chase and Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as the tackle made right at the 30-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Yeah, he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. On third down, Burrow. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. It's Mixon on the counter. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. 
Back to Mixon on second down. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks. 28, 23 yards, the final tally. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Play action. It's Burrow. He'll buy some and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Mario Edwards flies in to blow that play up. Well, that's a big defensive stop there, and it takes away a lot of the momentum from the offense coming off that big completion to prior snap. Give big credit to the defense for bouncing back. So maybe just a momentary setback on what's been a great drive so far, but second and 13 here. Now it's Burrow. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 15-yard line. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Cincinnati. It's the Bengals with the football here. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. As they've got it as we resume action. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Mixon is into the end zone for a Bengal touchdown. Just power football there, down near the goal line. Give it to him, he's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible, but all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. And that one makes it 14-7. to seven. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker in the Seattle offense. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, You've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Geno now to throw. And that one too wide and incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. 
Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Now it's Smith. Smith and Jigbo with the ground. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Good, strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. On first down, it's Smith. Going right back to Smith and Jigba. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Trying the left side with Walker. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 58 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Great pickup by Walker. It was the second back off the board in the 2022 draft. But he was first among rookies in carries, yards, and touchdowns and was the rookie of the year runner-up. Back to Walker on first down. And some room to work. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his O line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough and run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. They'll try the air now with Smith. Wide open receiver complete. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. Walker. Fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Well, big man with ball, net bigger man on the other side of the line. A really nice play for the defense. This Bengal defense, they passed the first two tests. Now it's third and goal. Throwing now is Gino. Certainly not what they wanted there. No gain, and it's fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Yeah, that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. Myers kick is good. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. 
taken at the goal line. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. Now, Charles, remember they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw taken in here by Chase. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second down and a yard. They go play action with Burrow. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Burrow on play action. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Burrow's throw there taken in by Smith. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. To the air again, Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. So no gain on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now they go play action now. Burrow. That is caught. And they're able this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A first down and then some. Give them 29 yards. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first half, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. They will throw on first down with Burrow. It's caught, Smith. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Add the game here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. They're just going to run a drive route here with their tight end. Let him get upfield about 10 yards, and then move toward the middle of the field. This ball's right on target, and it results in a first down. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And that incompletion breaks a string of five straight connections. And it's second down. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Again, it's Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and 8 coming up. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. 
And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. So the completion good for six yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. Burrow going for it on fourth. Touchdown, Bengals! Earl Smith Jr. from four yards out. And the Bengals have cut it back within a score. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal, because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead's down to a field goal at Touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. DJ Dallas to return it from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 22. Now Gino. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Cheetah Bay Aluzie with a pick. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now it's Burrow. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Burrow once again here on second and 10. Jamar Chase and Jamar Chase, 33 yards, and the Bengals have taken the lead. Partner, remember that old film of Peyton Manning going through the round tree with his great receivers in Indianapolis? I think we're seeing the results of the same type of work here today. These guys know each other so well, they don't even have to call the play. They can just look each other and know the route that's going to be run, and usually the connection is perfect. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. the touchdown McPherson on to kick this one away taking it about the one and the tackle going to be made right there at the 25 yard line now the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense and for this offense Charles you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out they threw the interception on the very first play and you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack. 
and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive lineman. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. Now Smith repeated the last play, finding Walker. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. That one good for 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Throwing is Smith. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Again, Smith. Left side complete to Lockett. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Broke yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. Got his big wide receiver complete. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you got to run fast. Of course, you got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. To throw on second down is Smith. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Throwing again is Smith. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Now Gino on first down. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. He hit his first, this one from 38. Myers' kick is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So, yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. Oh 
So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half out of the quarterback, Joe Burrow. He came on after a slow start to fire two second quarter touchdown passes and give his guys the lead at the intermission. Okay, coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. These offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner. And yeah, they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. A running play there. Going to get 10 and a quick first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Once again, they run with Mixon. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Burrow looking to pass. Short throw to Smith. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And he'll find Chase on the right side, complete. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them, and these guys have been taking advantage so far. Mixon with a first down carry, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. From the 37, they work on second and six. Play action. It's Burrow. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Open man, it's complete to Higgins. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 25-yard line. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half, 
just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. First down, here's Burrow. Throwing for Chase on the crosser, he's got it. Touchdown! Jamar Chase on the touchdown throw from Joe Burrow. And the Bengals take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. McPherson now for the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 23. Throwing now is Geno. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player. Maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. On second down, it's Walker. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing on third down, Smith. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Give them 22 there on the third down conversion. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for them picking up the first down. Up the middle, here's Walker. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Geno down to throw. And this is a quick slam to lock it. So five yards here, five on the play. And now third down and six to go. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Back to throw, Smith. Smith and Jigbo hauling it in on the out route. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with the bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go to try go with the quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. 
And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 31, here comes second and a yard. Straight ahead, Walker. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Walker with another carry. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. And even 100 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. On the handoff, this is Walker. Gets around him, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. They'll try the air now with Smith. Steps away to his left. So a holding penalty, and that'll send him backwards. You know they're trying not to do that. I mean, we know that, right? We talk to them all the time. But sometimes the defensive guys just put you in awkward situations, and you get caught grabbing their jerseys. Hand off here to Walker. And a short gain here down to the 22. But well, obviously they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. Now a run with Walker. He was able to pick up six yards there, so that leaves him with a third and 13. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Third down and 13. Now Smith. Oh, that is incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? Myers' kick is good, and that'll get the lead down to five. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter, look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that, because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send a message that says, hey, we're not going away. now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away and it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29 Jamar Chase hoping to be at center stage yet again as the offense returns to the field and I know that they have double teamed him a couple times but not a ton whatever they're doing isn't working he's up over 100 yards we'll see how they adjust and when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Attention. 
Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. From the 32-yard line now, here's a second down and six. Here's Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one, a gain of 20 in a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. Open man downfield is Chase, he's got it. It's a gain of 34. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellows up front. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Burrow. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. On that snap, he's a hero of his defense after the play he just made. A one possession game, and his hit kept it exactly that. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. From 13 yards out, and the Bengals are able to extend their lead. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. to the touchdown. McPherson on to kick this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker and the Seattle offense. He's up over 100 yards and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants and We'll see if he can find that end zone once more. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now Gino. And he's got Smith and Jigba. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Not only was it a double move route, it was the dreaded post corner for any defensive back because you think that he's going all the way to the post in a deep route, and then he breaks it off to the corner. That's hard to flip your hips and get there. Well, he didn't flip them in time. Big play. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Out of the gun, Walker with it. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second down, a run with Dallas. And a few little style points on the juke. 
But not much room to maneuver after that. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Smith. have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go on fourth. Smith. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Good yardage on the completion there, and when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know... Zach Taylor's made the decision. He's going to go ahead and throw out the red challenge flag. Previous play is under review. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stays. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. So this drive going to continue following the conversion on fourth. Here's first and ten. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. That is taken in by the tight end fan. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Escaping the pressure right, and he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Option play, and they'll give to Walker. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Ken Walker. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. There's a look at receiver Jamar Chase as the Bengals get set to go on offense. And we get a peek at the kind of game he's having. It's been a good game. Eight catches now, Charles. Everyone likes to spread the ball around. They want a lot of people to catch it and touch it, get a lot of guys involved. But sometimes when you have the hot hand or a person who's just really taking care of business in their part of the field, you have to keep going back to them. 
On first and ten, Joe Burrow. And his throw is incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Second and ten. Now Burrow. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Jamal Adams. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of, I don't even know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The interception sets them up with an opportunity to erase this fourth quarter deficit. Now this series could very well determine our outcome. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. After the interception, here's Smith. Looking right sideline, that's complete. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. A very solid gain of 27. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. He completes this to Walker. So that'll be no better than an incompletion, and that'll set up second and goal. That's a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Now Smith. And he finds Lockett in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Seahawks have taken a fourth quarter lead. There it is, partner. You see it. Four fingers. <laughs> what does that four mean? Fingers. That, four, that signifies the fourth quarters here. That's right. Who's going to dominate? Usually both teams are holding them up. We own the fourth quarter, what we found out so far. Two touchdowns here, and now they've taken the lead. Yeah, second one putting them in front. You know what I see on the other sideline, though? It seems like they've tensed up, had that lead. They were playing not to lose it, and they've lost it. That's a great observation. When you play not to lose... You usually don't win. Now, though, they'll have the opportunity to respond. It's complete, and this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. So that effort gives them a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about, not getting beat at this stage. At least give your team a fighting chance. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. Now the bad news for them, they've seen that cushion they once had totally evaporate, and they're working from behind. The good news, they now have the opportunity to regain the lead right back. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll hand it off here. This is Mixon. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, 
this intensity you usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. In any event, it happened pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had it to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield. But he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. And the Bengals on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On second down, here's Mixon. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. 49 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Back to Mixon on first down. Down to about the 37. Nice chunky yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. So from the 37, here's second and six. Again, it's Mixer. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. And the question now, can they get closer on third down? A field goal from here, you're looking at right about a 52-yarder. Now it's Burrow. He's got his target. That's complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 22-yard line. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively, but they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. First down, here's Burrow. And so it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Here's second and 10. In motion left goes Boyd. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and a run up the middle with Mixon. Looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Call it no gain on the run there and now they'll be looking at a third down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Burrow looking to pass. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. Touchdown, Bengals. Mitchell Wilcox from eight yards out. And the Bengals answer back with a touchdown of their own to 
take a fourth quarter lead. But plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and that will make this a four-point game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. He's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see it back just got to have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there's going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Here's Walker to start the drive. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Only a yard on the game there, and that'll set up third and 13. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Throwing now is Gino. That is caught. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. Out of the gun, Smith. He's got his big tight end fan. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field. So the challenge there, unsuccessful. And that means that he'll be out of challenges for the remainder of this ball game. Now a second and two. Smith now to throw. And that nearly intercepted. It's incomplete. Now remember, he had a pick earlier, but couldn't reel that one in. All oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was right for the taking. Could have changed the complexion of the ball game, but it winds up incomplete. Again, Smith. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play. But we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, 
They snuck the tight end out on that one. Wound up hitting him for a first down. Now a first down throw. It's Smith. Oh, and a bad time lay for a poor throw. It's intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hill. And the Bengals are going to get the football here at their own 23. Well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 23. They try to eat some clock with Mixon. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. Ball on the 27, here's second down. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Third and ten. Expect a timeout right away if they can't stop them here. Now it's Burrow. Able to find Higgins. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Pulled in at the 24. Called out a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So Gino and the Seahawks down by four. A minute 44 to go. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. Here's Smith. A quick target here, complete to Metcalf. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. And they've got to go thank the guys on D. Smith. And completes it again to Metcalf. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. Here's second and a yard. Smith to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Smith's going to throw it. And this nearly intercepted. Probably should have been. Had he caught it, it would have sealed it. Instead, one more chance coming up on fourth down. 
Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going, and I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now, has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what hasn't, because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Oh, that's a big pickup right there. That play might have saved them. Now they got to get up to the line of scrimmage quick. They've got to spike it. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and ten. Now it's Smith. His throw incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Smith now to throw. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and ten. Now Smith. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So an ideal set of circumstances there. They move the chains, and they save that final timeout. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Here's first and ten. Smith. And oh, that one nearly intercepted. That would have sealed it. Instead, it'll be second down. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. They'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take a full charge of his home. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. He'll find Metcalf. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 13-yard line. That drive was perfect, methodical, executed so well, and they grabbed that lead with almost no time left for a last gas from the other side. No way you could have drawn up a better final drive because not only did they keep their eyes on the end zone, but they made sure they bled the clock out as well and denied their opponent a chance to respond. That's just terrific situational football to end this one. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. That one in the books as a 12-play drive, and it's DK Metcalf who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24.
A final shot now for Burrow. Throw left side complete. That's Smith. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. shot they'll look to throw and it's complete right back in the hands of Smith trying to defend the out route there got the P.I. call and you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football and other times just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle I think he got caught in between and created a foul he takes it inside the 40. What a thrilling fourth quarter this one was. Well, at least, I guess, if you're cheering for the winning side. An, outst an outstanding comeback, though, that saw them completely take control and change the outcome of this game. Yeah, I'm not sure how many of us saw that coming, the way that they were playing and having the lead after three quarters. A little bit of a stunning ending because it wasn't just a one touchdown swing. It was a multiple touchdown swing for them to end up losing that ball game. Give credit where credit is due. They came off the pace and got it done.